right, questions over answers? All right. Eight, the answer. Eight was 30. Carter? Um, I don't know how to do questions. Let's do the answers first, and then that way everybody wait. Four. Four is 256 centimeters squared, Emilio. Five. Five is 68 centimeters. All right, Parker, now, how do you do which one? Uh, 17. Number 17, ladies and gentlemen. Number 17. 17. Oh, yeah. That's, that's just goofy. You know what? 17 should have been, I'm guessing that should have been 8 or something. That's just, that's got it. That is definitely a misprint. Although... Did they have, what did I say that was 2,500 Yeah. Yeah, I don't have any idea what this is. I, I, tomorrow, if it's the same, I don't think it's tomorrow's test, actually. That's, I don't know where they came up with that problem. Negative 4A. I have no idea. You, you can't really, you can't really do it from the end of the last hand by 4. To me, it looks like it's impossible. I got negative 4A times 7 and 4. Yeah, Let me look and see what tomorrow's issue. Is it seriously hot dogs? Yeah, hot dogs and macaroni. Hot trays, you guys have Hot dogs and macaroni. Well, not really. Yeah, tomorrow there'll actually be a number up there instead of a letter. I'm guessing that it's just a misprint. It should have been maybe an 8 or something, but. Tomorrow there'll actually be a number there in case you're still looking for how to do it. Let's make, let's say this was a 12 or something. I don't know. I don't know how to do it. Okay, when you divide by that, you take that number into that number, you get three. Just remember, note to self, when you divide these out, you subtract exponents. That's where 10 to the whatever fourth power would be. Somewhere along the line, something happened in the printing of that test that should not then A, hey, we've never run across anything that was an A before. But tomorrow I guarantee you won't be a letter. I just want to grant. How do you do the three? Number three. Right up here. Is that three? Which one is three? One. Two. Three, there we go. If a gallon of paint covers 400 square feet, how many gallons of paint are needed to paint the warehouse? Now, so this is your warehouse? Yeah. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is, if you're painting the warehouse, I'm going to guess you're not painting the ceiling or the floor. So you're just looking for the area of the sides. Yeah, and that's what you found in number two. So you have to get number two right to get the other one right. You need the lateral surface area for number two, which means you need to figure out the area of this front, which you can see, this right side, which you can see, but you have to remember there's an identical left side back here that you can't see, which would be the same as that, and there's a back, which is the same as the front. So if you figure out the area of the front side, what is 100 times 20? 100 times 20? Somebody? 2,000. Yep. So this is 2,000. What is 200 times 20? 4,000. 4,000. And you have double of those. So you have 4,000 plus 4,000 plus 2,000. Plus 2,000, which gives you the grand total of, what's that, uh, 12,000, right? That should have been your answer for problem number two, feet squared. So the deal is this, for problem number three, if you are using paint to do that, if you're trying to cover 12,000 square feet, and each gallon covers 400 feet squared, what type of problem is that? In other words, one gallon covers 400, two gallons would cover another 400. How many gallons is it going to take to get to that? What type of problem is that? Wade? Yeah, you're just going to take 
12,000 divided by 400, which means when you cross off the ending zeros, 4 goes into 12 three times, and you have that zero left up there. 30 gallons. That's what it is. It's a big warehouse. Very big, 200 feet. That would be the size of, just to put that into perspective. Let's see what the size of that. It would be this. This is about the width of our gym. 200 feet would be like two times as long as our gym. So take our gym, put it back, one back and back, and that's how much paint. And that's about the ceiling, by the way. Our ceiling is close to 20 feet. So. Or 100 um, uh, feet less than a pulling track, because a pulling track is 300 feet. Yes, if that's your basis of that. Or it is 100 feet less than a football field, which is 300 feet. Other questions? I'm good. I number four. Number four. Number four. Oh, good. Four is on the top page of the other side. Number four. Question four says, what is the area of the quadrilateral? Is that the one? Yeah. What did you cut it into? Well, it's already cut for you. You just find the area of this rectangle. And add to it the area of this triangle. And you'll get the total area. So what is the rectangle? Um, 160. 10 times 16, yep. Rectangle is 160. What's the area of the triangle? Now here's where you have to be real careful. And there's where you know the triangle is one half base times height. Well, we know the height is 16 because it's the same as this side, but what is it from here to here? 12. It is 12. So it's one half of 12 times 16. You can do it any way you want. Take half of 12. That's 6. 6 times 16 is 96. So 160 plus 96 is 256 centimeters. That answer for number 4 was. What did you get? And where did you go wrong? Um, I got 601 centimeters, and because I didn't cut the triangle in half. Well, there's some notes to these notes to self. And the I perimeter. Wrote down the, I wrote it? down half half a base time, so I, I just didn't do it. do it. And the perimeter, we might as well do that. Okay. The, the issue with the perimeter on this is you know this is 10, you know this is 16, you know this is 22, but you have to figure this out. So you look to see is there a 16 12 triangle up there? There is not. So what do you have to do? This is where people always go wrong. Let me erase this so I can look at it. What you must do in this case, this is 16 and this is 12. All right. What number can 16 and 12 be divided by? Biggest number. Four. Four. If I divide this by four, if I cut this in quarters, that makes this four. If I cut this in quarters, that makes this three. And then you say, is there a 3, 4 something triangle? Yeah, yeah and what is it? Uh -huh. Five. Yeah. Five is not the number you use, though, because that's the shrunken triangle. So you have to then expand it back to figure out what the big triangle would be, which means you just do the opposite. You divided these by four, so you multiply by four, and that's what this becomes. It's 20. So your perimeter is going to be 20 plus 22 plus 16 plus 10. You just have to think about it in terms of relationship. They could never give you all the Pythagorean triples because there's infinite numbers of them that are proportional to those smaller ones that they give you. Ooh, wow, yay. Everybody's happy. Faith. Uh, how do you get number seven? Number seven. Oh, I love number seven. If I were keeping notes to use for tomorrow, again, I would always write down that tax and tip is always multiplication. All right. And I know that here is my tax rate, and this is my number. 
I am taking $12.40 and multiplying it by 7.5%. And we've talked about this before. We don't do mathematical operations in percent form. It just doesn't work out. So you need to change this either to a fraction, which is not an easy thing to do, or you need to change it to a decimal, which is an easy thing to do. What is 7.5% as a decimal? And why? Tyler? 0 0.075. Remember, the changes to a decimal, you have to move the decimal back two places. It's not 0.75 because that's 75%. You go two places. This is the same as 0 0.075. And you're going to multiply that by 12.4. Zero. Let's just keep it the same. So here's where you just need to take your time and do it neatly so you get the right numbers. Times 0 0.075. You multiply like it's whatever, 75 times that number you get 0, 20, 2, 10, 12, 5, 6. What did we go down here? 7 times 0, 7 times 4 is 28, carry the 2, 14, 16, carry the 1, 7, 8. Did I do this right? Yeah. Right, the same way. Zero, 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 three, nine. And then how many decimal places is it? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. It is point nine three dollars or ninety three cents in tax. Notes to self, and if you struggle with this, you should be writing stuff down. Problem number seven, make sure you move the decimal two places to the left of the percent. I can't make it much easier for you. Mr. Westfall. Advocate number eight. If 40% of the students in the class are boys, and if they're 18 girls, then how many students are in the class? Did you draw a percent box, sir? No. no, that's not how I do it. Maybe you can't, uh, yeah, you can do it your own way if it works, but you're not getting it right. Then. Our percent and our actual numbers, what are we comparing? Boys to girls, and then you have total. Filling in the box. 40% are boys, so where does 40% go? 40% are boys and girls. So what do we fill the rest of the what's girls then? If 40% are boys, what are girls? 18. No. 40% of the student, what percent are girls? 60. And what is that total percent? 100. And then fill in. What are the actual counts? 18 are girls. So that goes here. Now the question is either going to ask how many boys are there? which would be this, or it's going to say how many total students are there. What do they ask? The total. So you use this box here. You don't need this part of this box right now. So it's 60 over 100 equals 18 over what number? Suggestions on how to do that. The easiest way would be to do what? Cross cancel. Reduce. Reduce. Divide both of these by 10 and then watch how easy this is. 6 times what is 18? 3. So 10 times 3 is 30. That would be the easiest way to do. If you don't like doing things the easy way, then you could cross multiply. 60 times what number is equal to 18 times 100. 60 and equals 1800. Divide by 60, divide by 60, cross out those ends, you'll still get. Still get. Fred! What number is this? Ah, oh, there's 14. Alright, Brant, what did you do? I Nah, you can't do that until you get rid of the parentheses. You get rid of the parentheses. You must do what's called the distributive property first. And how does that work? 
Grant, what do you get if you multiply 3 times x? What do you get if you multiply 3 times 2? Not x's. There's no x's here. It's a 3 and a 2. There are no x's. The only x's came for that first one. Plus, what do you get when you multiply 2 times x? 2x. And what do you get if you multiply 2 times 3? 6. 6. Once you get rid of the parentheses, then, then you can combine like terms, or in the case of Carter, what's called combine like terms. Right. If you have 3x's and 2x's, that is, and if you're drawing it out, it is, it's x. 3x's is x plus x plus x. 2x's is x plus x. How many total x's is that? 5x's. 6 plus 6 is 12. That's all you can do. You can't put x's with numbers. You just don't get along. They're just not very friendly. All right. Uh, 9 minutes, sir. Nine, the answer was 616 feet squared. Wait. Uh, how do you get number 12? Number 12. Anytime I see fractions, Faith, I think of what I would do if there weren't fractions. What if this was just a 2x plus 3 equals 4? What would you do? Do you want to get the x by itself? So you got to get rid of both the 3 and the 2. Which one goes first? Always get rid of the addition subtraction stuff first. Okay? So it's reverse distributive property. Reverse order of operation because you're actually working backwards. Okay? So you need to subtract 3, which means I actually subtract 1 third. If I subtract 1 third from 3 fourths, my common denominator is 12. 3 times 4. 1 times 4, 4 times 3, 3 times 3, 9 twelfths, you're taking away 4 twelfths, you're left with 5 twelfths, and then I have this, 1 half x equals that. And I get to that point, this is that special case kind of thing, anytime there's a fraction in front of the letter, how do I get rid of that fraction? Well, dividing is what when you talk fractions? When you divide by a fraction, you, you know, when you divide by fractions, you flip and, flip and multiply. You are just going to take whatever this fraction is in front of the letter, you flip it over and multiply, because look what happens, they cross out. Flip and multiply. Whatever you do to this side, you have to do to that side. You're left with your x, cross-canceling, you end up with a 5, 6, x equals 5, 6, one half times 5, 6, multiple 30, which is 4, so. Yes, yes, we are. Carter? I think it's number 13. How oh, do we get number 13? Now this is already, see there's no parentheses there, it was Grant, so you don't have to do any multiplication for this, you just put together terms that are alike. So Carter, Westfall, I have three x's, this is what three x means, I take one x of those away, what am I left with? Two x. Two x's. I have two y's, and I add another y to it, I get? Uh, four, wait, three y. Three y's. All you can do. You can't put x's with y's. There are no y's talking with each other. This seems to be very productive today. Parker, anything? Uh, no, not, not really. I mean, I'm just asking. Can you scroll back up to 12? I would love to scroll back up to 12. Isn't this 12? Uh, yeah. I'm taking some notes. <laughs> you are. I am. I love the taking notes process. What part, what, what part are you on? Uh, I just forgot, or I missed part of the last one half x equals 5 twelfths. Mm -hmm. What did I say? What did we say? How do you get rid of a fraction in front of the letter? We had a pretty big discussion about that. I believe Tyler chimed in here. Actually, somebody said, I think Faith said you divide by one half, right? Is that you? To which I said yes, and dividing by a fraction means you flip and multiply. 
If it was a fraction from the letter, let them multiply both sides by it. Ooh, that's our aha letter for today. Anybody else, as you peruse your pretest, anything else on that one where I do it with sports? Boy, this is looking like it's going to be the winner. Let's do it. Let's, let's look and see what we have not yet talked about. We have not yet done 20. Interesting. Nor 19, or 18, or 16. Nor 11. Nor Monica and her ribbons. Nor sprinklers and water. Well, you guys are in good shape here. Brent! Number 20. Number 20, ladies and gentlemen. Anybody know what I'm going to tell them? This is the things I would do in notes. I always start by putting parentheses for every letter. For every missing letter, I always start by rewriting it by putting the parentheses there. In other words, I'm going to take this and write one half Parentheses because our parentheses is there, plus another parentheses for the letter A, plus another parentheses for the letter B, plus another parentheses for the letter H. And then I go back and put my letters in. A is 6. B is 8. C or H is 4. And then what happens, Brant? What do I have to do first? Right. And these parentheses really don't mean anything right now, but they, I mean, you have to do 6 plus 8. What is 6 plus 8? So now in the big parentheses, I have 14. In the parentheses up there, I have 4. And in front, I have 1 half. What am I going to do from there? Times what? 14 times 4. Sure, which is? 56. And take half of 56, that is, probably want to do it off to the side. 56 divided by 2 is 28. Now please know, your life could have been relatively simple because this is all multiplication. It doesn't matter the order you do it. You can take half of 14 and get 7. 7 times 4 is 28. I could have taken half of 4 and gotten 2. 2 times 14 is 28. Either way, 28 seems to be the award winning number from the day. Did I mention tomorrow is the last and final grade you'll have for the board? You must have failed to mention that, huh, Dave? Not that there should be any undue pressure, but really there's no one on. We'll have extra credit, but we need to get to me by Friday. We don't have Friday because we're all going to be Peter Panified. Did I make it? The boy who never grew up. Am I stopping this here? There is no other questions. I will wait awkwardly for at least 30 seconds, so. When I send this video home and, and you say, well, they didn't understand it, I can say, well, uh, I don't know what you want me to do with mine. Well, you have a YouTube channel? I have 12 YouTube channels. Do I you am a YouTube master. <laughs> they named YouTube after me. Wait, what's your own YouTube channel's name? I don't know. Just, just put it Isn't on. it Jump Home? Or you can go to whatever map. Just no, not on YouTube. I'm going to look up this video. I can do that. You don't have to look it up because I will email it to your parents and they can give it to you. I'll give you a song. All right, parents, let it be known there are no more questions to be asked. I did what I could for your children. The rest is up to them.